Mark Fisher was shot five times in the chest. The 19-year-old's body was found wrapped in a blanket at the end of a driveway there at that home, Argyle Road. The college athlete started his night at this Upper East Side bar in Manhattan with a group of other college students. A few of them get together, they decide to go back to Brooklyn, and then Mark is shot five times, two blocks away from the house. Mark Fisher's body is found in close proximity, almost in front of the house of Albert Cleary, who was one of the other party goers. And Albert Cleary had left early that morning with one of the females uh, that was at the party, and they went and slept at his house. This became a high-profile media case, but it also seemed like a solvable case. It seemed like someone who was with him must have known something. Tony Russo, a high school dropout, was always the prime suspect. This fellow by the name of Antonio Russo, otherwise known as Tweed. He's a dreadlocked male. He's known to be a marijuana dealer, and he's also known to be a bit of a troublemaker. Immediately after the murder, Antonio Russo is, is in a little bit of a panic. He goes to a friend of his who cuts hair and has his dreadlocks cut off. And then he travels to California to visit an uncle, a little bit impromptu. If you're at a party where at the end of it there's a murder and you change your look and then you hop on a plane to go to California, obviously police are going to wonder, like, well, what do you know? What happened? John Chuka was somebody that was not immediately on our radar. But he was somebody that the more and more we looked into him and the more we asked around and the more we did our homework, he clearly was not a, a choir boy. You know, John is no angel, but he has a big heart for people, especially those less fortunate. Antonio Russo, before he flew off to LA, dropped a nugget of information to the detectives. He said that John Juca had been involved in a street gang called the Ghetto Mafia. You had a group of friends from a neighborhood who fancied themselves as young mobsters, and they had a name for that group, and it was called Ghetto Mafia or GM. Juca was said to be something of a big figure, a capo, if you will, in this organization, powerful enough to the point where when he gave a supposed order to take care of Mark Fisher, others listened. It was something that was totally blown out of proportion, and, uh, you know, it's, it was never a serious, I'm not, I was never in a gang, and everyone who knows me knows that. I didn't give much credence to that, that term, the ghetto mafia. There were several instances where that, that terminology came up. Initially, I don't think we, we looked at it as a gang-motivated crime. It was just a group of friends, but it was like different neighborhood kids that would hang out. Did you commit crimes together? No. That was such a joke. I watched these boys grow up. And from nine years old, they were first the Westminster Warriors. Maybe about 11, they became the Stratford Stray Cats. And then eventually, they did call themselves the Ghetto Mafia. They did. And it meant nothing but a bunch of boys getting together. And so when that was brought up as a motive for the potential killing, that they were trying to get street cred, hmm by either robbing or beating or... or... getting a body, as the prosecutor said. What did you make of that theory? Again, it's ridiculous. So there's a whole lot of smoke around Antonio Russo and John Juca, but as far as the detectives can tell, there's no fire. There's nothing that directly, forensically ties them to the crime scene. No DNA, no fingerprints. The pressure that was put on my family for over a year was horrendous. I recall a van coming down my block with loudspeakers. Do you have any information in regards to the murder of Mr. Mark Fisher? The press was out on my lawn night after night. It was, it was bad. And meanwhile, the months are clicking by and there has been no arrest. This is very galling for detectives and also very galling for the hierarchy of the NYPD. They don't like to be stumped, and they don't like to have cases go unsolved, particularly homicides. So at this point now, the prosecutors in Brooklyn have stepped into the investigation as well. So now you have what you call an investigative grand jury. A grand jury can be used 
as an investigative tool. Uh, basically can subpoena witnesses and say, you have to come here and tell us, and now you're under oath. And that can be uh, a game changer. You know, you can go into the grand jury and lie your head off, and then you'll be indicted for perjury, maybe several counts. Well, you're going to get cute and be evasive. We'll indict you for evasive, evasive contempt. So now these witnesses who didn't want to speak before, their backs are against the wall, and they now have to tell what they didn't want to tell the NYPD. They have to tell a grand jury. The grand jury brought up charges, and then we were sort of off to the races. Now, Eyewitness News at 5. A college football star found dead more than a year without an arrest. Now police say they've captured his killer. Things started to finally fall. It took more than a year. In November of 2004, 13 months after the murder, Antonio Russo is arrested. One of Russo's first comments after he's arrested is, are you going to arrest the others as well? And they said, well, who do you mean? He goes, oh, no, 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 never mind. The root of this, and, and there's much, much more to it, was the robbery as, as probably the underlying motive. The police commissioner in the news conference a little while ago, he said he hopes the arrest today brings some measure of peace to the family. It's hard, it's mixed feelings. Like I say, hopefully Mr. Hines say is uh, more arrest to be followed. One month later in December, while he's returning from Christmas shopping, John Juke is arrested as well. WB11 exclusively inside Brooklyn Supreme Court as 20-year-old murder suspect John Juca faced murder charges relating to the death of Connecticut college student Mark Fisher. It was a big deal for the Fisher family. They were ecstatic. They were happy that finally they can get justice for their son. None of us had any expectation of getting indictments for homicide. We got very, very lucky. Did you give Antonio Russo the gun that night? No. Did you put him up to it? Absolutely not. So you believe the police arrested the wrong man? I know they arrested the wrong man. I know it. And she's already probably starting to think, how can I fix this? How can I fix this? How can I fix this? How can I fix this?